there and, and try these things and, and go there and, and, and do it, you know, for yourself, I don't know how you're ever going to get it because it's just too intense, you know. It, it, you know, there's no way, you know, if I was to do, uh, if I was to get into all these side subjects, we, we couldn't stay focused, you know. The, the esoteric teaching primal scream session uh, video, you know, I mean, that would just confuse people. You know, and, and we don't want to confuse people. We want to we want to clear up your confusions. So uh, you know, at some point, it's like I don't know what to tell you. You know, you have to get out there and explore. You have to live and tr and try things and and get there somehow or other. There's a very good analogy for that. What's that? <laughs> when in in extreme sports. It's very, very frequently seen, actually, and I remember bungee jumping when it came out. Uh, everybody was like, wow, bungee jump. And then, have you done it? Have you done it? And like that, it was very like social or something. And then there, everybody who did it said, oh, you have to do it. <laughs> even if it was horrible, they say, oh, you have to do it. Yeah. And even if they tried to explain what it felt, like any like bungee jumping parachute or any any of those it's like no i can't explain you have to go through it. yeah and then the the persons who were curious enough then they would say okay let me try it yeah and then they would try it it was horrible and then okay <laughs> i'll tell everyone else but uh, in that case that's i think that's the same principle at least that you do something that's like beyond of like what you normally do and it's like freaky and you experience that, and because that's not spiritual, it's, it's, it tends to be more painful, more like... Uh, yeah. But th that same principle, when applied to trusting uh, uh, someone that you really can trust, like Krishna, uh -huh. then it's very pleasurable. I remember, that's a good point. I remember two weeks ago, I was chanting my usual set of rounds, and... Uh, so it was like, it was very hard actually suddenly uh i felt like i was in the middle of nowhere completely pitch dark like really like black and usually i think oh well this world is pathetic but i mean it's not that pathetic i mean <laughs> when i had that that uh, suddenly just the chanting you know and it was like pff, suddenly i was in this space where everything was black like dead dark and i said oh boy this is darkness but immediately because i was chanting the holy name i could immediately focus in, in radha krishna and and it was like so nice you know like ah i have something that i can hold on to you know even if i'm in the middle of this darkness i have this this thing to hold on to yeah and this is the same if you're going to yeah, lose your mind walk through the valley of the shadow of death i shall fear I no mean, evil i mean it's really bad so when when you have something to hold on to and you lose your mind it's okay because you have krishna you have yes that's the point there was a, a beautiful description of this in Srimad bhagavatam that uh when the inhabitants of vrindavan met krishna at the uh, solar eclipse sacrifice after the battle of Kurukshetra. They had not seen Krishna in 108 years. And the whole time they were like mad with separation. Mad, I mean nuts. It's described, you, you can read some of the descriptions and they're just pathetic. It's just like, you know. Anyway. So then they saw Krishna again after all that time. And of course, he hadn't changed at all. So uh, then it was time for everyone to leave and go back to, uh, you know, wherever they came from. Like Krishna was going back to Dvarka with the, with the Yadus and the inhabitants of Vrindavan were going back to Braja. And it's described there was this very tearful farewell scene. Uh, 
and that the, the inhabitants of Vrindavan all bow down at Krishna's lotus feet with their, and their minds became fixed at Krishna's lotus feet. And then they went back to Vrindavan, but their minds stayed at Krishna's lotus feet. Yes, yes, right. So uh, they went back to Vrindavan without their minds. That's the purport. Yeah. Yeah, so in that way we should be we should be able to, you know, give up our mind to Krishna and trust that Krishna is going to take care of us. See, remember the function of the mind is an early warning system to guard us against uh, being hurt in the material world. This material world is all full of dangers and difficulties. And so uh, the mind is there to warn us that, oh, this, this resembles something that happened before when we experienced pain. See, that's how the mind works. It works by association. So the mind is not logical, actually. The mind is associative. So when the mind sees something that resembles a previous traumatic experience, then it warns us. It says, no, no, don't do this or don't go there. See? But in the spiritual world, we don't, we don't have a need for the mind because there's no pain in the spiritual world. There's only pleasure. See, there's no hate, there's only love. There's, there's only ecstasy in the spiritual world. So when we're with Krishna, we have no need for the mind. We can easily let go of the mind, easily go beyond the mind uh, when we're with Krishna. See, the, the mind, which is a, a necessary thing, huh? just like if you go outside in this weather, you know, you. You need a parka, you need a raincoat to protect you from the bad weather. And if you don't have one, then you're going to suffer. But in the spiritual world, you know, it's like there is no need for that protection. Huh? Everybody is eternal. Everyone is, is full of bliss, full of pleasure always. So it's a whole different environment, and it runs by different rules. And the, what we do all the time, or we tend to do, is project our materialistic thinking on the spiritual world or on spiritual phenomena, and then we come to wrong conclusions or wrong speculations about you know, what it's like or, or whatever. So don't do that. Read our series on spiritual logic in the Transontology section of the website, and hopefully that will help. What do we got? Nobody dares ask any more questions. <laughs> <laughs> no questions? Okay. What is that? E? Oh, e? Sounds like E flat. Namaste Narasimhaya. I hear 